Morning guys, welcome back to Holland's Allotment. Saturday the 31st of July 2021. So I'm just giving you a quick look in the uh, polytunnel in here and as you can see everything is growing exceptionally well but I have a couple of concerns in here. So we have started st taking some of the tomatoes, you can see they're starting to ripen up now. And this particular uh, variety is Tigerella. And you can probably see on the camera the stripey effect on the tomatoes. This isn't disease or anything like that for those who don't know. It's a particular variety of tomato so named Tigerella because of the striping effect on the tomatoes and they're extremely delicious. So this year I've had a lot of this what appears to be caloris deficiency um, leaf curling on the bottoms and it's progressively getting worse now it's been particularly hot even with the doors in here, uh, doors open in here and um, I'm thinking that's most of the problem. However, as you probably remember earlier in the season we had an infestation of spider mite, white fly, whatever it was. And so we basically removed the affected plants and things seem to settle down a bit in here again. Uh, but all the tigerellas are doing really well. We've now pulled all of these onions and we've just been leaving them to dry on the bed. We've got another lettuce here that's gone to seed, which will be bitter now, so we'll pull that today. And we've got another one down here. And these big beef steaks, I've decided I'm not going to grow anymore, guys. I really don't like this look of this on the underside of these. In fact, I'm going to cut all these out. Um... There's something seriously wrong with the foliage. Now, I must admit, I haven't been watering as diligently as I normally do. Um, and that's because I've had so much going on this year. The core's yet still doing fine, but the, uh, the melon has now died to death. Again, just neglect on my part, guys. So the fact we're getting anything at all is a bit of a bonus. These are the uh, F1 Crimson Crush, which seem to be doing really, really well. And we have got an aubergine here, which is still thriving and putting flowers out in spite of. We took that big cucumber off there. This does look really healthy, but it hasn't, as yet, put any more cucumbers on. But it's still growing. And we'll wrap it across this wire here. But if I can get close enough into this... You can perhaps see what looks to be green fly on this one here. And the stem looks badly affected as well. And this is another one of those beefsteak tomatoes. What's more, it appears we've got blossom end rot on these. Although they're still really, really firm, they are soft ish on the underside. So we will be cutting this out and that one and that one and that one at the end. So I'm going to take all of the beef steaks out. Um, I really don't. They look good and they're getting the size and all the rest of it but they're not they don't look appetizing and what's more um, the seem susceptible, far more susceptible than these varieties. Uh, these just look really, really, really bad. And although these have been suffering this year, they're still holding their own and fruiting well. Now I'm going to use my other hand because I don't want to touch these tomatoes with that hand I've just been handling those with. And as you can see, they're perfectly formed. No, um, no signs of stress on the tomatoes themselves. And we're getting trussfuls, and trussfuls of these, as you can see. Trusses and trusses full. This one here is an alicante. Uh, sorry, no, this one's tigerella as well. This one's an alicante, and that one's an alicante, and that one's alicante. Those are the three I grew myself. These are tigerellas that my father-in-law grew. First time I've ever grew them, but they are a really nice tomato. We've had a couple already that's ripened up. Um, they're really nice. It's just this foliage, guys. Is anybody else having this problem this year? Um, it's predominantly healthy on the top. 
but it's just severely curled. But I'm not seeing any insect or white fly on these at all. So I'm not sure what's causing that. Is it a lack of water, over water? You tell me. It's probably, um, because this is no digging, they, do, they can go down and, and get the water themselves. I know they can, but I do water them. Um, but perhaps maybe not as much as I should be. And it's probably part of that. Again, I'm a novice gardener and it's still all a learning curve for me, guys. Anyways, I'll catch you shortly. Morning, guys. Just in the uh, shed, having me usual cup of coffee. Birds all fed and watered and the chickens. And we'll give you a quick look around in the polytunnel. And at the start of the video there, just a quick look at the frill stencils we've managed to breed this year. Or some of the frill stencils we managed to breed this year. And you may have noticed two milky cocks in there as well. So at this point I just want to say thank you to Mark. Delighted with the birds. He got two of my birds and we both just paid for the courier each way. Uh, he paid for the courier for his to be delivered and I paid for the courier for those to be delivered. And we've done a swap on the birds basically. So thank you very much Mark. I'm absolutely delighted with them. We now have hopefully two breeding pair of milkies. And you know that one of them is definitely a cock, so we've at least got one pair. The young bird, if it's a cock, great. If it turns out it's a hen, well, at least as long as we've got one cock bird. Um, right, just a bit of an update. So, Company X still hasn't delivered any goods. Um, they have no means of contacting them, only a chat. Uh, I've been on the chat, sending abusive uh, chat messages to them, telling, demanding them to refund me. Um, or I'll be going to the Ombudsman um, and I will get the bank to do chargebacks to them. So we came up Monday evening and Tuesday evening after work. Monday evening we got all of, well, all of the salvageable plants transplanted into the walk-in cage, brassica cage, stroke, whatever we put in their cage. Um, so we got all those transplanted. And then on the Tuesday, we came up and I put the double sided Velcro onto the, I made a little slate and lat frame and put the slate and I stapled on to the wood. Although it stuck to the wood fine, I put staples in there as well because the humidity and wood being wood, it potentially will peel off. So we stapled that bit and then we stuck the other one to the plastic and it got a fantastic hold. And I'm pleased to say the windows work excellent. You can roll them up and I can drop them down and seal them. Now I'm conscious that gales might actually blow them out um, with the severity that we get up here. So we might put some uh, sliding shutters on the inside as well just in, just in case that does happen through the winter months to try and stop any rain driving in and hitting the citrus trees. Not so much the citrus trees but the peaches. Um, because we don't want rain coming in at all, basically. So they should stay put because they've got a really good hold of these Velcros. However, because of the winds and the way it keeps blowing it back and forward like this, it might weaken it and get a corner up and throw it up in the air. So we're going to put some sliders in behind as well with Perspex or something like that. I haven't made my mind up, but that, I've got the idea in my head. As a double whammy, for one, to double insulate in winter if I want to start seeds early on. And two, just in case they get ripped off and then at least they're still protected to a degree internally with the sliding shutters. Um, so that's just a bit of an update with what we've done through the week, guys. Um, I'm going to have this cup of coffee and we'll give you a quick look over there. I don't know if I'm actually doing anything today at all. Um, I've just came up to basically check on things. Probably going to water these plants in the greenhouse cut out all the beef steaks, trim some forage back on the tomato plants to let the sun get at the tomatoes now. And that's probably about all I'm going to do today, guys. So right, guys, we've just spent the last two hours in the polytunnel. And I think you'll agree, it looks a little bit better now. Right, rightly or wrongly, this is what I've done. So we've cut out all of the beef steaks, stuck and tucked them, pulled the roots out, and... Basically, we've left the little cucumber to crack on. This aubergine 
it's struggling, but it might make it now with these aren't here and dragging the nutrients. Um, the cucumber, we're going to actually run it this way along because we've got the tomatoes on that side. And now we've cleared this, we'll run it along this line. We've took the bottom foliage off this as well to stop anything decaying on the bottom. And we've done likewise with this aubergine as well. Now we have got some flowers and we'll give it a good old drink. And hopefully we can get something out of this before the end of the year, guys. You'll see I've drastically cut all the foliage off the bottom of all of the tomato plants now. And we've only left them with three or four leaves on the top. We've done the same last year uh, without any ill effect. Fingers crossed. Same thing this time. But we want to start ripening this fruit that's on here now, guys. I don't need masses and masses. I just need enough to keep us going. Likewise, you've got a couple of little trushes on there. This one is still actually growing up. Um, I found a lot of suckers on this and that's why that's a stunt is we've pulled all them off and likewise we've cut all the bottom foliage off on this and left it with two or three. But now you can see all of the fruit that is actually on these uh, tomato plants and the weight of this, I've basically had to put double strings on this one to take the weight and try and straighten it up a little bit as well and get the fruit off the ground. Um, this one, it is just and so above the ground so what we've done is we put a little tree underneath just to hold that. You'll also see that what I've done is I've put a string from one one uh, strong trunk down to lift these were hanging on the ground so we've lifted them up and likewise with the one through there. So guys uh, basically we won't babble on it we've, what we've done is we've basically give everything a haircut all the way from the bottom up and leaving our soil with five or six leaves on the top now um, and start getting this fruit ripened. Um, they've had a good drink, I've soaked the beds, I've been soaking the bed for a good half hour. Yes, some of these are now going to split as a result, I do know that, but hopefully not too many. Uh, good half an hour soaking on the beds. And likewise, and now we'll just leave them to their own devices and see how they go. This is the horse pipe we've got. I've repaired that. That was broken up there and we were having to use the other IBC. I've got two round the back of there, full. So it's 2,000 litres round there. I've just repaired that tap and uh, used the length of hose with a little spray nozzle on the end. Now, I don't have any pressure. I've literally all I have up here is the fall. And that's it. So it takes a long time to water, but there we go. It looks like we have actually shifted Jeff <laughs> over here. Um, I haven't seen much activity over in the growing area, but as you can see, he's now digging up all of this. But as long as it doesn't go into the polytunnel, I can live with it in this area if it stays over here. So maybe the mole scarers are working to some degree. I don't really know. Catch you in the show, guys. Right, guys, I've decided to split today's video, Saturday's, into two because it's way too long. So, thanks for watching. Hope uh, you enjoyed today's content. Um, don't forget to like, dislike, leave a comment in the sections below. As always, guys, stay safe, be practical, keep yourselves out of harm's way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.